Welcome to the Porn Reboot Podcast, where you get practical tips to gaining control over your porn or sex addiction. We help ambitious men end their out-of-control sexual behavior with pornography, sex, and masturbation so that you can maximize your life, perform at your potential, and remain in control in the driver's seat, which is where you have to be in order to gain or maintain the success you want in life. I'm your host, JK Amazie, Certified Sex and Porn Addiction Recovery Coach. Welcome to the episode. All right. Welcome again, gentlemen, to another weekly session with Porn Reboot's Neural Reprogramming Coach, Milan. Milan, always a pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here. Excellent. Today, the topic we're going to be talking about is a very important one in your journey to ending your out-of-control behavior with pornography, sex, or masturbation. In the Porn Reboot system, when we simplify our process, the first thing we do is we help you change your habits. Your habits is, you'll see a lot of guys doing the whole habit change thing. A lot of the NoFap coaches do habit change, and it's wonderful. It's a great place to start. But those habits are not going to stay with you until you make them a part of your lifestyle. Lifestyle is the second aspect of this. Now, once it's part of your lifestyle, you actually start seeing changes in different parts of your life. You start seeing it in your health. You start seeing it in your relationships. You start seeing it in your mood. So your lifestyle is conducive to your mental state. But in order for you to stay off this behavior permanently, Your lifestyle, understand, is only addressing one part of your life. Your entire self-image has to change. Now, I've used the word self-image over and over again to define the state you need to be in a change self-image in order to no longer identify as a man who views pornography. But I've never really dived into what self-image is exactly. And that's what the expert, Milan, is here to share with us today. So, Milan, what is self-image? Mm-hmm. Okay, so self-image, it, it is a really important part of our development and our growth. Self-image mm-hmm. or self-concept is basically idea that we have about ourselves, uh, how we perceive ourselves, how we define ourselves, and our self-image or self-concept um, is influencing a lot of all of our thinking, motivation, our performance, learning abilities, and how we behave. Our self-image and self-concept is basically our identity. And when we say identity, it is all of our um, beliefs that makes us make our individuality. And also um, creates that self-image creates all the differences between us and someone else. So it is a generalization of experience that um, help us know who we are if that makes sense. Gotcha, gotcha. You ended that by saying it's a generalization of our experience that lets us know who we are. So we could maybe say it's a sense of who and what I am. Yeah, because it's it's a really large concept. It's it's a huge thing, right? There are five main components of our self-image or self-concept. The first one is valuable. This is our sense of experience that um, of our own quality then we have sensual or sexual this is uh, that physical substance of our identity and how we interact with others so how do you feel uh, about your body how you think about your body and how you feel inside like i said then that uh, another thing is uh, significance so how important you are to yourself, to others, to the world, and so on. Then we have another component that is learning capabilities. Basically, experience that you can do anything if you can learn it, if you learn how to do it. And another one, the fifth one, is a um, kind of powerful component, and that is um, you realizing that you are able to change your experience, to influence your experience, you can create a destiny of your own. So all of these things together and other things like beliefs and, um, like I said, thoughts about ourselves help us answer that question, who am I? Which is a really philosophical question, yeah? yeah? And we can answer this question in many different ways. So for most people, they're going to go straight for their occupation. You know, They're going to say, I'm a coach, I'm a, I'm a doctor or something like that. 
or other uh, may define themselves um, with, with the role that they are playing. They are father, brother, son. They also have other ways, for example, including their emotions. They can say, I'm a passionate person. Um, and many other ways we can answer this question. But it's all kind of a generalization. That self-image is a generalization of all of our experiences from the past, pretty much everything that we uh, know about ourselves. This is great, Milan. Another point, I'm just going to peg this. We are definitely going to do a session on the five different aspects of the self-image because things like significance, learning capabilities, I speak about your ability to learn things, which is we call self-efficacy, your ability to influence and the central and sexual. I feel there's so much that we can take out of there and break down individually. But for the sake of time and just keeping to the topic, why is self-image so important? It is important for our bigger generalizations, generalizations okay. about our generalizations, which is self-esteem. So our self-esteem comes from evaluation of our self-concept uh, or self-image uh, related to our values. Basically, if we like our self-image, we're going to have higher self-esteem. If we don't like it, we're going to have a lower self-esteem. And that, that bigger generalization is really important when it comes to decision-making, behavior, uh, the changes that we are creating, how we value ourselves, and, and so on. So this is the most important thing. And of course, uh, that self-image influences choices we make, uh, how we're going to behave, uh, and how we are going to respond to uh, certain situations. Basically, uh, when, when we have a trigger, mm. because of our self-image, we are going to be capable of deciding not to act on that trigger or respond in a different way that is more healthier for us. This is so important, especially the concept of triggers, especially when somebody is, let's say, triggered sexually with a specific urge. You're saying that their self-image literally impacts their response to their trigger when they're struggling with an out of control behavior. Exactly, exactly. If somebody is there and having that self-image, like whenever I see an attractive girl, I do this. This is a self-image. Mm. This is a generalization about them, who they are. But if they change that self-image and say, when I see attractive girl, I appreciate, you know, a pretty sight or whatever, but I'm doing things that are, you know, important to me, healthy to me, and so on. When this they have great. that kind of self-image, they are able to make different kind of choices. This is so good, Milan. We have a lot of brothers that come to us within the program, to both Milan and I, and they'll say things like, I just can't help it when I see a beautiful woman. I, I just have to keep thinking about her all the time or imagining what she looks like without her clothes. And they just say that. And we often just tell them like, that's literally the way you view yourself. There's a, a statement in your head, which is saying, I am the type of guy who cannot stop thinking about a beautiful woman when I see her. Exactly, exactly. So self-image is pretty much a summary of all of our interviews so far. It's all about the values, the self-talk, the perceptual positions we, we talked about, how we see ourselves and so on. It is a huge generalization that comes in a form of that picture, a sense of who we are. So the moment we change that sense of who we are, we are able to change our responses and our behavior. We are not that old person before, we are somebody new. That is excellent. So for a brother who is now realizing that, wow, okay, so this self-image thing is pretty important. I'm starting to see how my self-image affects my life and my ability to reboot. How would one go about changing their self-image? Mm -hmm. There is a very interesting technique that uh, anybody can try, and it's really fun to do. It is similar to what we talked about already to the perceptual positions. So basically, you imagine yourself as the first step, and then you describe yourself in, in, in few sentences, how you see yourself, how you think about yourself, and so on, to you get a really good idea uh, of your own self-image. The next step is to think about a person who really, really cares about you. Now, it can be pretty much anyone. Yeah, mother, father, brother, 
niece, nephew, whoever really thinks that you are really awesome. And then you can imagine how do they see you. You can imagine yourself looking through their eyes, listening through their ears and asking questions like, how do they see me? What they value about me? Why I'm so great? Why I'm so awesome in their eyes? What did they see? And we gather all this information from someone else's perspective, somebody who cares about us, who thinks that we are completely awesome. And once we have that, we detach from that perspective, but we preserve and keep the, the, the emotions, the learnings from that experience, and we transfer that back into our first position, the first point of view. We step into our own shoes and we then uh, close that gap by deciding, okay, how can I plan my future feeling like this about myself when we have that resource and so on? The, the key thing when, when it comes to changing your self-image is not to change all of it right away because it is a huge thing. But you can find one thing that you can change for the beginning and then uh, see how that develops. So, for example, maybe somewhere in your self-image you don't see yourself as disciplined or, or consistent when it comes okay. to doing a morning routine so this is the only thing that you want to change about your self-image and that's it that is going to be quite enough to get the you know that create that snowball effect that will create a more powerful self-image but if you try to do all of these things uh, at once, like to completely change your self-image, that can be quite overwhelming for our system because it's much more than just an image of ourselves. Gotcha, gotcha. There, there are many components to it. And mm -hmm. gentlemen, for those of you who are watching this, a gentle reminder that Milan is sharing the technique part of this once he has laid the foundation is very important. I know a lot of you who listen to this are very busy. You don't have to go looking for a book to find a technique to use. If you're using each of the techniques that he's teaching in each of these sessions, you're going to make exponential progress because a lot of times you haven't been using anything at all. So right now, the technique which he's talking about, I think it is very powerful. I'm actually going to try it myself. Like literally somebody like your mother or your father, somebody that you know re who really cares about you, trying to put yourself in their shoes and see what is it that even though I don't feel great about myself, why does this person love me? Why do they still stick around? Obviously, as human beings, we have a connection to somebody when there is something of value that person gives us. Even if that thing of value is emotional in nature, they make you feel safe. Maybe they make you feel worthy. Maybe for your parents, it makes them feel responsible because you are their legacy. You maybe you affirm their existence and then seeing like, wow, maybe my existence, just the fact I exist is so important. It's awesome to my mom and my dad. Can you guys imagine that? Like literally there's somebody out there who goes like, you are a miracle to me. And then try and put yourself in the shoes of being a miracle and a precious thing to somebody. Milan, that's very powerful, man. Yes, it is that's very powerful. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. So what are some of the things that can happen when we change our self-image? Well, the sky is the limit and maybe <laughs> not even that. So we can become literally whatever we want to be. Yeah, you can define yourself as, as a millionaire. You can be successful, the best husband, the best uh, husband, of, whatever you really choose. You can choose your own self-image and create a life around it so basically it's pretty much you know dream come true we are what we want to become this is true now i i 100 agree with this i remember when i was leaving my former career to start off porn reboots i was doing something which everybody was doing before and i was now going to do something which i had not seen anybody doing before and i had to literally go through the process every morning of sitting down and visualizing the person I was, the people I was helping, how much I cared for them, what exactly I wanted my life to look like. And that's the magic of this, that we can literally decide to be someone. And as long as our intentions are pure, as long as all those things you mentioned, 
significance. We believe that we can learn how to do those things. We have the, what was it, ability to influence? Is that what it yeah. was? Power, power, ability to influence our uh, experiences. Our experiences. I truly believe that in my personal life, all of those things have helped me to get to where I am today. But more importantly, I see it every single day in our successful clients. So mm -hmm. a lot of brothers are like, oh, JK, what's the system? What's the system? You can get the system. You can get all the techniques. All that stuff is good. But unless you master self-image, and I wouldn't even say master, unless you understand it enough to start applying those changes to your life, none of these techniques will work, which is why somebody can pick up a book or a course that says it's going to make you whatever. You're going to make $100,000 US this year. One person does it. The other person loses money. And a lot of times, of course, there are many factors, but often the one difference between those two people is their self-image. Yes. This is the basis of all uh, therapy and, and coaching in general. Everybody who wants to make successful transformation and help them help their clients to, to solve the problem, to overcome their challenges, they have to work on their self-image. So their self-image at the end of the process, when they feel great, when they feel capable and ready to, to experience the world in a new way, we have to be sure their image, self-image has to be changed from what was it at the beginning. Have to be a different one. Exactly. I couldn't agree more, man. I love this session on self-image. I think we're going to do something a little bit deeper on it in the future. In the meantime, Milan, again, thank you very much. Always appreciate you. your expertise. We'll speak to you later on in the week. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Porn Reboot Podcast. I'll speak to you later on in the week. If you found this episode helpful, here are four ways I can help you with your out of control sexual behavior for free. The first way is to grab a free copy of my book, Confessions of a Porn Addict, Seven Secrets of Porn Free Men at elevatedrecovery.org or visit the link in the description below this episode. The second way is if you're not sure where to start, but you'd like to learn more about my team and I, if you'd like to spend time with like-minded professionals and business owners who are controlling their behavior, then join our free and confidential group, the Porn Reboot Group on Facebook. There's a link to join in the description below this episode. The third way is if you need help right now because you have a burning issue, your behavior with pornography is hurting you mentally or emotionally, you're about to lose your relationship, you want to live up to your potential, be an authentic man and free yourself from shame, guilt and underachieving, then click on the link in the description below this episode that says free coaching call. And the fourth way is to leave us a five-star review if you enjoy this podcast so that we can reach more men who are struggling in silence and bring back the lessons we learn from coaching them to freedom. 